Hi everyone, I am B. Nandakishore, working as an ITCD trainer in social welfare schools. Today, I want to talk about some really interesting experience of my teaching and also want to share my way of teaching with you. Topic which I choose to share my experience is representing information. Before going into the topic, I wish uh, to talk about my school. Our school is a government school located in Andhra Pradesh in a beautiful village. Uh, children here are from illiterate families where the whole family must have to go to farming works or any daily wage works so that they feed the children. We don't have private schools in our area so students need to travel long distances for schools from the neighboring towns. I started the session by telling the importance of uh, Lippi where Lippi is considered as writings, letters or any alphabets. As we elders have already lived and become habituated to current world we live in, we don't face many problems but imagine a newly born kid or say like a person from PK movie comes to our world and tries to live here. He would face many difficulties like uh, why should he ride a bike or car on the left side of the road or he might get confused with rules and laws which we currently use in our world. Same is the situation with a learning kid. He is new to all this generation stuff. He doesn't have any idea about some technical things like uh, say how a movie is coming on to the screen how a Wi-Fi works. Such things would be very fascinating to a new learning kid. Hence, I thought it would be best to start my teaching from the older civilizations like how they passed their knowledge to the further generations and giving my touch of representing information in daily lives and how it will be helpful to understand the situation without much of an effort. Here you can see some pictures which were drawn by prehistoric people. I showed these images to my students and asked if they could, if they could identify any pictures drawn to which uh, many children shouted their versions of answers. Then I told, you see Without knowing these humans who drew these pictures, nor their languages, you could understand what they want to convey, isn't it? After showing the prehistoric images, uh, I showed some general signs or goals which we see in our daily lives and asked them how many of your students can identify these signs or goals and or have you seen them anywhere. Asking such questions has really brought students into the topic. After showing these images, I thought I could give them an activity, a general activity, such that uh, I could enhance the thinking of students. I asked the students if they could design some signboards to which I would say the context. They were all ready with their pens and papers. Uh, a signboard for which to walk in a line, open laptops and start working, and relaxing after school. These were the contexts I have given to them. They have drawn such caricatures with their intelligence and understanding capacities. After the drawing activity, I drifted my topic into a, a related context for our chapter, which is representing information by asking another question how can a computer draw to draw a picture what did you do you took a pen paper and you drew with your hands but would you believe me if i say the picture you are watching currently and the movies photos songs which you see or hear are drawn and sung by the computers when i ask this question students were filled with so many thoughts so i tried to elaborate 
and explain to them with the activity given in our material. So what the activity does is it has zeros and ones where the student have to mark only ones or fill only the blocks with ones. After filling them he would get a picture. They started noting down the figure and darkening the colors. Then I said what does the symbol look like? Some shouted it has a ghost symbol. Some told a smiley. Then I had to make them silent and told them this is how a computer draws. To get deeper into the subject I showed the next slide. Here you can see a dotted LED red board. So I showed this picture to the students and asked if they had seen it anywhere. Some said they had seen it in railway stations, buses where the destination boards are held. And in our school also there is a clock similar to it. Some children even told that too. Later I told by increasing the LEDs like if there are 80 LEDs in the picture shown, if we increase them to 160 LEDs or 200 LEDs, the picture would be crispier and look like this, which is an 8-bit picture. If we increase the LEDs furthermore to say 1000, then the pictures will look like this, which are the photos or the pictures students see them. Then I said, this is how the evolution of the pixels and the high resolution pictures which you see in your daily life has emerged. This is how I thought would reach the children in an efficient way of representing information. I want to talk about impact my class created on the students. I've got several questions out of which I will uh, address two questions. A student asked after this class, how could a computer be able to sing? This is a big one. Even though I knew I could answer it, but felt hard to give students such complex answers, which in turn would confuse the student even more. So what I told is, sound is in wave form, like C waves you see. They are converted into digital zeros and ones, like a switch has on and off, zeros and ones. Then the input is given to a speaker. A speaker is a sound producing unit, like every object in our world. Like if you take two plates and bang them together, you will hear a sound, isn't it? Same, likely, the speaker also produces sound according to the input given. It increases the sound or amplifies the sound and produces songs. This is what I gave them. But there is much more tech inside the generation of audio from the computers or machines. But I hoped I have given the interest required to learn it. When he has physics class on sound in his 8th or 9th, he would definitely listen to it and get more idea. Another question is, how could we get a color picture? To which I didn't have to struggle a lot because some students are, are wise enough to figure it out that it's a color LED. Many students were excited to learn about the technology inside the computers and displays and about the life forms, how they communicated in their ages by representing information amongst them, uh, which gave them a wider subject to think about. I feel my session has brightened up the student's mind and shed some light on the topic of representing information in different ways and could never be forgotten. Now coming to the conclusion, I could just start the class from say computers can understand zeros and ones only and by combining zeros and ones in various combinations we can produce alphabets, pictures and so on. But I felt bringing any kind of interest through real examples would help every one of the students to remember my class. So I started this way. Such activity based learnings will play a major role in getting interested in the subject rather than giving them only bookish knowledge. I feel computational thinking is a great way to open 
children's mind in wider perspectives. And this has got potential to unleash unimaginable creativity in students' minds. Finally, I am very thankful for this opportunity to share my experience with you all. Thank you very much.